All right, what's up guys, it's Gary. So in this episode, it's gonna be quick and simple. I'm gonna show you how to hook up a tachometer to a mower engine. Now this is not gonna be a wiring tutorial by any means. This is more or less just, I'm gonna show you under the engine cover, we're gonna look at the ignition system, the magneto coils. We'll compare that to a regular 12 volt ignition because if you have an old school mower with like an old Kohler single cylinder, some of those had electronic ignitions and you can hook a tack up to that of course. Uh, so we'll go over that real quick, but more or less I want to show you how you hook up to one of these magneto setups So let's just take a look at a couple of different engines here, and I'll show you how simple it is There are many different universal tachometers you can find on eBay or Amazon. Uh, I believe I got this one on eBay um, Not sponsored by this brand, but I this was a uh, motor meter racing um, I originally bought this as a diesel tack, so it only goes to 4,000 RPM, but it works just the same. It has the same signal wire and can be hooked up. Now, on a diesel, it was meant to go to the W terminal on the alternator. I shouldn't even be telling you that because that has nothing to do with this video. But, anyway, your typical tachometer wiring is just a positive, you know, 12 volt and a ground, and the green wire is going to be your signal wire, and that's what we're really talking about today. Where do you bring the signal, where do you get the signal from, from these mower engines? All right, so under the cover on the Briggs Intec V-Twins. All right, guys, it's voiceover Gary here because I guess I just didn't do a good enough job when I was actually talking about what I was doing here. So let's start with where you're getting the signal and what this wire actually is. So this little wire that's on the back of the coils, it actually is how the engine is shut off. And when you turn the key to the off position, all that you're actually doing is grounding this wire. You're grounding the back of the coil and that stops the spark, that turns the engine off. And that is actually where you're getting your tack signal. So the wire for the tack, the green signal wire is gonna go to that. Now on these V-twins, uh, particularly the, uh, the Briggs Intec V-twin, I'm not exactly sure how it is on the Kohler or the Vanguard, but there is on these Intec V-twins a diode in the harness so that there is no reversion between the coils. And if you don't have that diode, by the way, it will fry the coils. Um, all you need to know is when you're connecting your tack to this setup here, make sure you're just connecting on the far end of the harness, basically where after the wires have come together and it's just one wire coming out of the engine cover going into the ignition switch system. Uh, that's where you'll get your signal. So uh, let's move on and we'll take a look at the opposed twin. It's uh, similar but different. So the opposed twin is just slightly different in the sense that it has only one coil, not two coils. So you don't have to worry about a diode in the middle or coming from the, where the two Y together or anything like that. It's just one coil, two plug wires, and there's your little wire right there, the ground out, the kill wire, whatever you want to call it. And again, that is it. It's coming out somewhere over here, and that's where you can get your tack signal from on the opposed twin. The horizontal shaft post twin is exactly the same. I'm not going to pull this cover off to show you, but same exact layout in there. We're just sitting a different in a different position. And on this, you can actually see there is the black wire coming out from behind the cover. And this is a factory piece here, which is actually where your ignition switch would go to to kill this thing. And that's where we have our tack signal wire just directly connected to. I'm filming this completely out of order, just like a real movie. So let's take a look at this 12 volt uh, electronic ignition setup, because if you do have an old Kohler, I just wanted to show you real quick how you would hook a tack up to that with the standalone coil. So your typical 12 volt ignition with a standalone coil, positive and negative on your coil, your tack signal is gonna come from your negative side of your coil. So again, some of the old, like real old school Kohler single cylinders will have a setup just like this with a coil just like that. And green wire, as you can see, going right inside this car. So that is where your tack signal is coming from. Now on these Kohler Command V-Twins, some of them actually have a different style ignition system, but it's still a magneto. But some of them have an ignition control box, which will actually be mounted on the outside of the case here, or outside of the shroud. It's a black square box, and that is an ignition control box. They're actually very prone to failure, and the fix for that, when you go and you need to repair that, they will sell you 
just regular replacement magneto coils, basically a, a, a kit to eliminate that uh, control box. Now, it's still, even with the control box, it'll still have a ground-out kill. It's still a magneto, so it'll be the same thing. You'll just still get your tack signal from the actual harness portion that's coming out of the engine. That's the best place to just connect it, because that way you're not going in between the coils. More or less, the Kohler V-Twin underneath there looks basically the same. This is a regular magneto setup. does not have the control box. looks exactly the same pretty much as the Briggs under there. All right, so now that we understand what we're hooking the tack up to, let's hook it up to this. LS something, probably a Corvette or something. Um, so now that we uh, know how we're hooking our tack up, let's go ahead and I already have this thing basically wired up as you saw, uh, just a wire going to where it needs to go. The positive in the ground, I don't have to explain that. Um, we're just going to hook her up and uh, we'll fire this thing up and see what it does. Another thing to keep in mind is the adjustment of the tack. So a universal tack typically, some of them will have a cylinder count adjustment, four, six, and eight. Most tacks don't have a two cylinder variation. Um, you basically, for a twin cylinder, you can set it to four cylinder and it'll work. Now I think that also will work on a single cylinder the same way. It should, in fact it will, because this opposed twin, as we just saw, only has one coil. So effectively this will be like a single cylinder in the sense of how it fires, and with a four cylinder setup that should work. This tachometer does not have the cylinder count on it, it just has a fine adjustment. The tachometer on the old hot rod tractor over there, that actually has a cylinder count and a fine adjustment. And the way you want to use that, especially with just a fine adjustment, is get an inductive tack. Now I believe you can find those at like Harbor Freight. You can buy them online. They're usually very cheap. It's really just a, a little handheld thing that you stick right up against the plug wire uh, and that'll actually give you the actual RPM of your engine and then you can dial in your tack. So again, so let's go ahead and uh, fire this thing up. I've already adjusted the tack just by ear. I do not have an, indu an inductive tack on hand, but I, I basically adjusted it by ear. I think it's fairly accurate, and uh, we'll see what it does. And then as I was editing the video, I realized I stopped recording and never actually recorded me revving this engine with the uh, other tack on there. So... Let's uh, cut to uh, footage of me at 3 a.m. in the morning on Saturday night revving this thing. I stuck a muffler on there, too, just to quiet it down so, uh, you know, the neighbors don't hate me too much. Of course, that was after about two minutes of it just idling with open straight pipes. But anyway, <laughs> here it is. Yep, it might need a little bit of adjustment still. It seems like it reads a little low on the high end, but uh, yeah, you get the idea. It's, uh, it's a tachometer, and that's a mower engine. All right, guys, well, hopefully that helps you out. Uh, in a future episode, I will be doing a recap on the rev limiter setup that I have on the other one there, and we will probably be setting up a rev limiter on this opposed twin once we get it further along and actually have a running and driving machine. Well, we have a running engine, but you know what I mean. 
so uh <laughs> that's gonna do it for this one uh real quick simple episode i'll be getting back to work on this other project this week because i got to get something done on that thing i did figure out uh what happened to the other one when i hit the rock wall why the belt won't stay on so we'll be fixing that and maybe take it up the road maybe take it through the woods i don't know we're just gonna have some fun so uh i'll see you guys next time subscribe like comment all those things uh thank you for watching and see you later Oh, yay. This thing is running rich as hell. You see my eyes? Holy crap.